Hello and welcome to this week's episode of 9 to 5 Nerds with Robert Swathwood, Corey Urkel. How do you do? And our guest today, because she's the expert on the uh, subject. I don't know about that. She's is... an expert on gaming. Are you an expert on gaming? No. I'm not like those crazy people. What about gay men? I know nothing of them. Okay. You're talking really <laughs> quiet. Sorry. Um, is Katrina Swathwood. And we are going to do a before and after on the American Gods season, season one finale. Season one finale, probably series finale. Um, no, it's not going to get rebooted. It got or, renewed. Or, or, renewed. For, renewed. It got renewed for season two. Like, <laughs> she get rebooted already? Did it get renewed for season two before the first episode or right after the? first? I think it was like right after. Okay, yeah, the that's how it goes. Season. Yeah, um, but before we were talking about how a one book would be multiple seasons and as the season's gone on you can tell why it's going to be multiple seasons not only have they added some stuff like the mad sweeney uh, laura moon stuff and a few other things but it's very slow going yeah extremely slow going at like storyline wise at snail's pace and it's not necessarily bad because they have added a lot of stuff but we're getting nowhere fast right and as much as I like the source material, and I, I like that they're adding stuff, because Mad Sweeney is great. And any extra screen time he gets is... Fantastic. Fantastic. I hope he goes on to do more things, because... Oh, yeah. Well, I've already started looking at what he's already in. Because he's such like a presence on screen, kind of. There's not many... But he's I'm like a if Tyrion. That tra- if that translates... He's a scene stealer. Yeah. And the way he uses the C word sometimes. I was, I was waiting for what, yeah. what, you, what you told me that. I think what he said, yeah, you're a leprechaun. Yes, there you go. Uh, <laughs> and he just, he doesn't say her name. He calls her dead wife. Yeah. That, that's the funniest part to me. Yeah. That even like, when Shannon was like, yeah, my de- it's better with my dead wife. And that's all he calls her. Hey, dead wife, come here. Like when she stayed in the bathtub while the police were taking him out, that was good. Yeah. Oh, you fuck you, dead wife. You're having yeah. a dick. She's not dead. <laughs> oh, and then when the crash happened, her her Rip incision case. for her yeah, autopsy her burst y, open. Her cool. Y incision. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that they have the flies buzzing around her At and, all times. Always. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was a, I was a, I'm a big fan of the scenes in the present day with them. Yeah. That's awesome. I liked. I know you said you didn't before this, but I like the whole backstory with him. I. I could have done it being 20 minutes. Uh, See, that less. wasn't my favorite Coming to America stories. There were two. I liked hers, and I liked the Car- uh, Caribbean twins. I yeah, was the really Caribbean disappointed, twins was though, good. that they didn't cast somebody else to play S.C. McGowan, though. Yeah, it was a little weird. Um, um, it's Because now you know that people that haven't read the book are going to assume that maybe she's one of the descendants of hers. Reincarnated. And, yeah, reincarnated, and there's a connection there when there's not. Or if there is, it's just created for the show. It had no bearing on yeah anything else. They wanted to draw parallels between the two characters and from what Brian Uren. Fuller said. Okay. And then they have the same old woman. woman like yeah, the young she, uh, girl. Yes, had, the had, old had, grandmother played Essie McGowan as a grandmother. Okay. I, I also thought, like, the, is that like... All a, Irish people look alike? That or a budget constraint? Unless we only got money for one old lady. So let's just double dip. I don't dip. think that's the case. Probably not, but... Still, I, I was like, "That's kind of weird." Well, how did you like the uh, the the gun god or whatever? Vulcan. Vulcan. The Vulcan. Oh, it's funny because when they were showed, because well, that was added for the show. Yeah, and the intro to the episode was uh, Jesus helping some Mexican immigrants. Mexican Jesus. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, get across. And when they were shooting, I was I noticed the word Vulcan. I was like, "Oh, that's oh, interesting." I, I thought about like, oh, "I wonder if that's anything related to the." Show, you know, because Vulcan is a god's name. Uh-huh. Uh, and it was. So, I was like, I'm, uh, I'm paying attention. But, yeah, it was cool. What do I know that guy? He's a famous actor, isn't he? He is. Who is and he? I, and, and I immediately recognized his yeah, face. Yeah, he looks old as shit. But couldn't kind of place him. I didn't look it up, but... Um, I don't have my phone. It'd be tough to look him up anyways. Is it over there? Yeah, Grab it for me. Um, it was during that episode, though, I, I started noticing... I, Watch one episode just with headphones on, um, but there's like uh, there's a score that is throughout the whole like all the episodes, like it has music to it ninety five percent of the time. Yeah, and I don't think that the tone fits the content uh, half the time. For when when Vulcan, that's why I thought about when he got beheaded, 
it the music didn't seem to fit like the like betrayal like it just it was weird it just kept going i was like i don't think it was jazz but it was just it kept tempo it didn't really like blow my mind like that should have been like a surprise kill i don't know the music should have jumped but i don't know i've noticed, I've noticed a couple other times that <sighs> that's just his style that was the bad guy in kiss kiss bang bang that's what i know him from okay but- the director guy how it doesn't fit the tone of the show and that's just kind of how Brian Fuller yeah, does like, his stuff. So on the whole, like just the scene where like Shadow walks in on Lower Moon, you know, um, this music playing and it just doesn't fit the tone of it, like and everything's slowed down. So it, I don't know, I started noticing it and No, you can't unnotice it? Kinda. I mean sometimes it fits. Sometimes it doesn't and I don't know. I don't know I, don't, I never noticed like a, a show's like music so prevalently as like this show. Like if Game of Thrones has it, I thought it was more subtle. Like that's creep, how it creeps in. Hannibal was as well. Right. It was music played a big role in the mood and the tone, and, setting the scene. And there was a lot of it. Like I have no problem with like when they're in Mister Ebus's or Jackus Jacks Jackus. What's his name? Ebus or Jackus? Something like that. Like when they're playing like fifty songs, like it's on the radio, the it gives a fill. Uh, like a feeling of like old timey. Mm-hmm. Like, that's fine, but yeah. So I don't know. I'm gonna notice it the last episode probably. We'll see. Uh, I'm I'm definitely excited to watch the last episode, but I'm not. I don't have the same feeling I have when like Game of Thrones is on the last episode. I'm like fuck, now I have to wait this long to yeah. watch the next episode. Right. Which we're a month out of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Which is awesome, but uh, a month from today. Yeah. Four weeks. So, I, yeah, I'm less than a month in. But I, I, I've i liked the show so far. There's a lot to like. It is slow, and that doesn't bother me that much. There, there is a lot to like uh, visually in some of the characters. Uh, Ian McShane as Mr. Wednesday is yeah. awesome. Is it weird that like, they cast and they tout, you know, Crispin Glover's in it? But legitimately, he's going to have had like a maybe 10 minute scene mm-hmm. in the show. And that was he his was whole good role. In that scene. He's going to be in the no. last episode, too. Oh, you think so? Yeah. They had He's going to be there. Oh, I see the preview. And then the technical preview. warrior show up at Easter's. Oh, okay. I had no idea what it was to come, so... Well, they... Easter's the only one that we haven't seen so far, and she's yeah. cast, and she's going to be in this season. Okay. Oh, like, because in the book, they didn't meet Easter until after the House on the Rock. Right, they met her at a coffee shop in San Francisco. Yeah, when he was doing his recruiting. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, to be honest, maybe talked about it before, but I don't remember that she was in the show, so... Yeah. Thanks for the spoiler. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this going to be the show House on the Rock? I don't think they're no. going to make it there. They're not making it to House on the Rock. They might season. stop there. Wait, that's not going to be like the end cap with like all the gods? No, I don't think so. Oh, and if they, as if they did have it, do you think they'd actually film there? I don't know. That'd be cool. Would it? Yeah. Well, I heard that... I thought the game had said that the first season was going to end at House of the Rock. I thought that it was going to end right before... I think it'd be cool to see them driving up and that's the end of the season. What a weird climax. Yeah. Unless they make like one that's out of the book type climax. I don't know. Yeah, I, well, there's... it's. I mean, it's one book, so there's not really a big... Well, because what? We know we're going to see Mr. Nancy. Yeah. And they met him first sitting on a, on a bench. Uh, theoretically in the House of the Rock. Right. Uh, did you guys assume that Mr. Wood was an actual Wood-like demon? No. Because I, I thought they had code names. It was just, they could have been human almost. I mean, for I thought they were human. They were, I, I, I they envisioned were them human. as being human. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Town and Mr. Wood. So, did they, like, reappropriate that, uh, that was a Wood god somewhere that was, like, basically, the whole PlayStation thing was kind of weird. I don't, I don't Yeah, know. that was a little strange. Yeah, I didn't like that. I liked Crispin Glover. He was creepy oh, yes. as hell. He doesn't have to work hard to be no no to Strange. be creepy. Uh, I still know like what God powers are. So if they can be killed, like so, is, like Vulcan kind of dead. Yeah, he got pushed he in that thing. Yeah. So sacrifice is, 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 that easy, is that easy to kill a god? Like could Crispin Glover had just been killed right there? Or well, I, I guess it depends on what their powers are because they do have powers, but they are mortal. He thinks he's talking to a friend, and his friend takes him out basically right isn't that what happened with well vulcan revealed that he already called yeah he'd already called mr world and let him know that they were there they hooked me up with this gig they're the ones who told me to put 
firepower. And he took him out. Right. Yeah. He was playing both sides of but, the fence to get him down there. But what's the name already knew that, Mr. Wednesday? He was like, yeah. And he said, you've already swore oath to me and made me a weapon. Now you're the blood sacrifice. <laughs> While well, he's playing a little jazz music. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. But oh, I was going to say something else about the police station. Um, I guess no, no ramifications. I just wonder, like, whole police station massacred and nobody it's got a bat and eye. So I had a question about if it's sh- the show's like continuity of, or continuity, continuity or what. But in the, in the book, uh, when they have "I Love Lucy." that scene uh-huh. mm-hmm. it's Lucy like talking to Shadow Moon and this one it's what's her name Jillian Anderson uh-huh. right playing Lucy I thought they got an actress who looks like Lucy and he's supposed to be seeing the equivalent of Lucille Ball mm-hmm. but then when they used Jillian Anderson to play Marilyn Monroe and David Bowie uh, it's obviously the same person do you think in that universe you're supposed to see like the exact replica of Marilyn Monroe or a lady who's dressing up like what we see I don't know. I never really thought about it. He perceived her as Lucille Ball. Yeah. Because he referenced her as Lucille Ball was talking to me. So he's seeing Lucille Ball. And then, but then the but we co- are seeing another person because we're to know that it's the same yeah. God. In the police room, didn't he say Lucy? Like when he seen Marilyn Monroe? Did he say... Uh, I don't remember. I thought he You watched some... it more recent than we did. Yeah, I thought he was something. I was like, oh, did he see... Like basically a lady dressing up like all these... Celebrities, but uh, that was still cool. That she's just weird. Uh, she, she takes on the like basically the attitude or the yeah. Well, she's supposed to. Yeah, and that's what she did in the book too. So she take on the presence of Hitler if she wanted. Yeah, <laughs> just walking like Hitler. <laughs> I don't know if that's really a media well, connection. It's crazy. She's I, he's playing enough like t like conspiracy channel. I'm sure that's he's true. all over TV. She's almost fifty. Yeah. She doesn't look it. No, she doesn't. I mean, obviously. I haven't seen her outside of TV. You can do whatever you want with makeup and... Yeah. We've seen Patrick Stewart fucking... Even when she was on Hannibal, she... And she looked a lot younger. Yeah. I didn't think about that. She was on Hannibal and she's on this, Brian Fuller. Yeah. A lot of of directors and stuff like that take their people from... play. We were just talking about The Mist where Frank Darabont had three people in The Mist that ended up being on Walking Dead. Uh, I think she's a good enough actress. I didn't... Until that last... Well, that episode. When she was Lucy, I didn't know it was her. I knew it was her because I saw that she was cast. Okay, so I don't know if that's anything to say about the makeup or just her acting. It doesn't seem like her. I've only seen her from X-Files, probably. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else I would have seen her in. She's in a couple movies. She's not a big actress. No. Just, people know her name. I mean, she's yeah. an iconic character, so lucky. Yeah, I mean, X-Files is a big show. Yeah. Um, but unless you guys have anything else, we'll watch it. No. And then we'll come yeah. back and talk about the, we'll be right back. the finale. So we'll be right back. I just said that. All right, and we are back. We just finished watching the season finale of, well, you know, because we started the show off with American Gods. So, uh, what would you guys think? Uh, let's you go first, Katrina. You're the most judgmental on this. Um, most critical. Most critical. No, I, there's just certain aspects of the show I don't like, but... No, the episode was okay. It started off kind of funky and weird and disjointed. Completely deviated from the book. 100%? That's okay. That doesn't bother me. Okay. Um, the Easter Encounter, I you know, I thought it was much more fun the way they shot it versus what happened in the book. The other one was just like a scene of them talking on the streets. Right, they get a cup of coffee and yeah. hash stuff out. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, I'm not too happy with the way Shadow's characters progress throughout the season just as a uh just a, a real quick uh ign gave it a 9.1 out of 10 for the season finale okay i think it ended really really well the last the last 10 15 minutes were really good for sure yeah okay it's funny shadow gets so little like screen time yeah even though for he's being the main, the main character, character. Like, but see, they said that they weren't going to have him be the main character in the TV series. They were going to take away from just him and Wednesday. Otherwise, they would have blown through all their material. Yeah. yeah. That would have gone by really fast. Well, for him being the everyday man who, like, we're wearing his boots trying to figure out what's going on. Although he's really slow to catch up. Like, you know, he just now believes there are gods. 
it's been eight episodes of him seeing weird shit. Yeah, the well, spoilers, but the the reveal of who Mr. Wednesday is and him being Odin was obviously in a completely different place than what happened in the book. In the book, you found out at House of the Rock, right? He found out what was going on. At I the thought House he of the Rock. saw them as when he went in the right yeah. went on the John carousel. Board. Yeah, he saw them for who they were. Yeah, that uh, the whole scene starting from when they got to Easter's house was really cool with all the Jesuses. That's just funny. That was really good. And the bunnies and the yeah. jelly beans. The bunnies, the jelly beans, everything. Starting and ending with Bill Quist. Uh, she's obviously been in the show a lot more. They obviously have plans for her. Right. Uh, but, I mean, I guess that goes for Mad Sweeney, too. They're both in it a lot more. Mad Sweeney was in the book more than Bill Quist was. Yes. Yeah, Bill Quist got... Two scene, uh, uh, like yeah, flashback scene, and then maybe they talked about the somebody running her down. Right? Was that her technical boy? He kills her. Yeah. Uh, Spoiler. Well, that's a book. I, I don't think it's, it might not happen. It's happen. Yeah, it might not pan out the same well, way. Well, with Sweeney, he had basically three. No, he had two occurrences, and then they toasted him to his death. Toasted. Yeah. Toasted to they his had death. A toast okay. Yeah. To his death. Okay. Yeah. They didn't toast him to death. I was no. gonna say, yeah, that doesn't. <laughs> it's opposite. He froze to death. Yeah, I was gonna say it's opposite. Um, but also the encounter at the end towards this with uh, Laura and Mister Wednesday. Did they ever meet in the book at all? I can't remember. I don't he think was so. aware of her being there, but they never had any encounter. But there was never any animosity between the two of them. Like he was just kind of like, "Oh, so your wife's alive? That's kind of weird." Um, yeah, she pop in and out, save him, and then disappear. I wonder if this is the example of a writer going back and doing things the way he wanted to. You think in all, hindsight, you think it's all his input? No, but I mean, no, he, he might have came so. back and said, "Hey, you know, if I could do things differently." But like, see, I don't know about that because he was talking about her cast scene, and he did not see Laura looking like that at all. Who cares what she looks like? That doesn't mean that the writing changed because of what she looks like. That's true. Because, I mean, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm not a writer, but I'm assuming once something comes out down the road, you might be like, oh, you know, it might have been better if I handled this way. Like, you know, he's, in the book, he said, oh, she's alive, that's weird. Mm-hmm. But you don't, there's no interaction with him. Maybe he wanted there to be interaction with him. Maybe he wanted to do things differently. Like with Walking Dead, he wasn't sure if the book was going to get picked up, so he killed Shane off yeah. really quick, or... With the show coming back around, he was able to expand the character a little bit more than what he originally did because he thought the book was going to get canceled. Not that a book is going to get canceled compared to a comic book, but... Why didn't you just do what George Lucas did and just change the original work and despite if people he's care done or not? That, he's done that before. He really? actually rewrote a book when it released here in the States because we would not have understood the tube system over in England. So when he wrote Neverwhere... I, I know. He couldn't just say subway instead of tube system? No, it's because the way he describes things in the book, you're in the subway a lot, and he has to describe like what's going on, so he had to rewrite it so we could understand. That's just a translation. Oh, that's... He rewrote the whole book. That, just, that sounds unnecessary. It really does. And no, I, I don't even, know the plot of the book, so I, I Even the editors, say. they went and redid everything on it, so it would make more sense to somebody who wouldn't have a visual concept of what was going on. There's tons of books where you don't have a visual concept of what's going on. We though. Read the books. It's my we favorite book, so... I, I, I get it. The American one or the other one? No, I read the American version of it. Have you, would you want to try reading the other one? You should read the other one and see. see what's different. Yeah, that would be cool. But because see, when are the, when's another example of you getting to do that? Yeah, that's... I know they change minor things in movies. I don't even know movies. if it's even in print anymore. That I'm sure you could find it, but... I know that That's interesting. they change things in movies to appeal to different markets. Right. But to rewrite a whole book when, you know, you can leave things up to people's imagination. You know, I've never been on the subway in New York, but you can have a general idea of how it works. Right. To change it, to rewrite a whole book just seems unnecessary. Uh, it, it, I don't know. That's just a fucking, that's... That's a pretentious motherfucker saying Americans aren't going to understand this, so we're going to change the entire thing. So they're you stupid asses. Like I don't know. No, like if you think about how like our 
criticism of like American God, where he just goes randomly to another section, and we don't know what the fuck's going on, like another person's narrative and stuff. Yeah, and he doesn't if he didn't take time to explain what the, who the guards are because he does so much like research and uh-huh. so I wonder like if he writes in depth enough that it would be generally confusing if he didn't rewrite Maybe. it. Like, because if it just if it was a whole book with just like jumps or does something weird like it, I don't know. I don't know. When I see when I see people donating things to the comic book legal defense fund at Comic Con and people donate art and sign books and all this stuff and this motherfucker donates a t shirt from his closet because I'm so cool that somebody's gonna want my t shirt, I, I get a little like and that's going as far as I actually like his writing. So Can you be mad that he's don't like he donated something? Like a T-shirt, you couldn't. He could have donated a signed Sandman book. He could have not donated. I don't. Know. He could, but to think that I'm so important that somebody's gonna want my T-shirt that I owned. But the gentleman uh, probably somebody did. Uh, it was still there when I was there, so somebody <laughs> taking it yet. I'm just like that. That bothered me, and that just turned me off to the guy to begin with. But since then, I've actually read a book, and I, I really like this book a lot. So I'll, I'll back well, off. Just think about like Good Omens. You started reading that. How all over the place is that book? Yeah, but that's that's a little different because it was written two by writers, two people. Yeah. And I tried picking it up again. I'm just like, this is hard to it's get really through. It's really hard. But once you get to the good part, it starts to go pretty fast. I was interested at first, and then I lost interest. And I'm, I'm trying to get back into it, and I'm just... It's hard. I read it hard. over two days, so... It's a short book. And I was traveling. Yeah. So that made it easier. Um, but back to this. Uh, I actually like the fact that Wednesday is meeting... Moon and the look on Sweeney's face when he was up there next to her, he's just like, uh, Shit. yeah, I'm here too. Yeah, it's interesting because I don't know what's going to happen because we didn't, it didn't happen like this in yeah. the book. It's nice to keep the source material and kind of get to the same place and have the bullet points, but get there and instead of a straight line, you know, you kind of weaving yeah. through it. A lot of detours. I, I don't yeah. think we needed so many bill questions. Without the like the season, like she had the one flashback scene. Uh, or one scene in the book, but how many episodes was she in? Where she did the same thing, like basically. You're um, hoping that there's a payoff in the second season for her being in them. You know, you you got a lot of Bill Quist. You know, who you didn't get enough of Chernobog, because no. I want to see more of him, and I want to see him raining down the hammer. Yeah. Obviously, that will happen when you actually see a war, but. Right. Well, because yeah, Bill Quist was never in league with technical boy in the book either so there's some connection there they're going to come back to with that because does that mean she's on his side when she's going to the house on the rock she's in no, the that, that's not why i got the opposite feeling that well, she's going to help the opposite side well, obviously she hates yeah she seems to hate technical boy but when he said time for you to do your job right he wants us to call in his favor and the next scene is her on a bus headed to the house on the rock yeah. well, that's where they have their first meeting to figure out what they're doing mm-hmm. and She's obviously going to that meeting, because there was a bunch of gods at that meeting. With as slow as this is going, you assume there's going to be more than two seasons, as long as the ratings are positive, right? Yeah. Because you figure there's going to be multiple episodes of The House on the Rock, there's a lot of stuff happening. Just going down into The House on the Rock, that's going to be at least a whole episode. They're going to spend a whole season just at Lakeside, that's going to be the whole... Oh yeah, I forgot about Lakeside. Yeah, going to like Lakeside season next three. season. No way. You as slow as it's going... He'll probably arrive at Lakeside at the end of the season. They'll have to send him away. Okay, Maybe. so I That'll was... That'll be like uh, the finale, because he's got all the Cairo. Because then he got Hensel in. I was talking to somebody on Facebook that I know, and I was talking about... Uh, we were talking about the book, and I'm like, man, he describes those uh, almost like empanadas or whatever he was eating. The it was meat like, pies. Yeah, yeah. In the book, and I was like, I bet you those are really good. I, I mean, and they're like, he's from the Midwest, and he's like, oh my God. He's like, they're really fucking good. I can't remember what he said about them, but... Uh, they sounded really good. I want to try one. <laughs> what were they called? I don't remember. Um, keep going. I'm gonna look. At what the meat pies were called? Yeah. Um. Was he George R. R. Martin now writing about food? Yeah. In extravagant detail. Yeah. No, not really. It's like he gets in the car and he's like, "Oh, you need to try these if you go there." Or was it the bus driver that told them when he got off the bus? Yeah. You need to stop here and get something to eat. Come on, guys. What else happened? Well, I, I like how Laura Moon's, like, in a period of one episode now, she's totally a zombie. Oh, yeah. with her she's detain? Gross. Yeah. Well, that's what happens, and that's why, you know... They make mention she works nights and stays cold, but, I mean, it's just cool, like, in the show, you actually see it now. 
Like, already. Well, she's already going to be super pissed because she didn't get her resurrection. Well, not yet. So that's not going to... Oh, that's not going to happen. In the book, I assumed Jesus would have been one of the most powerful gods, kind of. But he's never... Uh, he's not in there except he's referenced. But when they go to a house with a bunch of Jesuses, and the only focus is for both sides is to recruit uh, Easter... Like, does Jesus not have any He's clout? feeding off her holiday. Yeah, but Jesus is, like, the most... She's using him. Isn't he, like, the most worshipped person, like... Right, and that's why she has so many out there to help filter off her... So, uh, you think you'd want to recruit a bunch of Jesus, like... It's like I can walk in water and heal people and... Drop a glass into a pool? Yeah, did he go, oh, shit? Like, he could reach out and get it, because he can't... <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. This sucks. Okay, hmm. the place he went to was called Lake Town, right? Lakeside, I actually thought. Was it Lakeside? I, I think so. I, I could be wrong, but I remember thinking it's like Lakeside here. I'm looking. Keep Why talking. Is it a real place? Can you guys like oh, okay. Sorry. keep something going without me? Well, uh, you interrupted I'm us. I'm talent. Now you think like you're about to find it, so. Right. I thought there was a breakthrough there. No, because it kept going Lake Town, and it it, uh, it kept bringing up uh, Desolation of Smog. It was called Lake Town? Yeah. Well, how inventive. Yeah. Out of all the, the names made up in Middle in, East. Yeah. No. I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. No, I'm not too happy with Shadow, though. I think that's an issue. He, he, you know, going into it, I was like, he has the look of what I kind of would have imagined right. him. But he really hasn't played off well as much as some of the other... I just don't think he's landing dialogue right. It just sounds really weird. I did like how he was kind of infatuated with... Easter, Easter, like every time he looked at her, you could tell in his eyes and on his face and stuff that right. that he was um, that he was all about her. Oh no, I'm, I guess I'm just disappointed. I rather the book version than that. We're not even gonna get a whole episode out of this. Uh, I was wondering, could Odin or Mister Wednesday have pulled out his sword and chopped everybody up? Uh, technical boy and television lady, media, media. I I don't think Technical Boy is really there. Is he like a... Is it a projection? His teeth yeah. got knocked out. Uh, no one... From Mr. World. And I think Mr. World is kind of filtering through everything. So, um... Is this... Spoiler, t- can we talk about who Mr. World really is? Uh... Or, well, do we even know who Mr. World really is? We assume gonna that's going to be the great twist. You would, you would hope... Well, okay, so super spoilers, uh, book spoilers. So don't keep listening. Yeah, if you're unless you're Travis, Travis doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, Travis, don't listen. No, he doesn't care. So, what probably is going to be the big reveal at the end of the show's run is that it was just a big con job between Odin and Loki, and that Loki was Mr. World. And. I'm just wondering, does Loki have all those powers? Like, is he just fooling everyone? Like, is, he can shapeshift. Uh, is that all he's doing? His, he also said, like, they made it seem like, um, with the satellite pictures in the one episode, okay. that this is a view of a very certain god. Like, he's omnipotent, kind of. He is Mr. World, you know. Would Loki just, like, is that all just, is this all, like, trickery somehow? Like, is he fooling uh, media and technical boy? Like... He's been around them long enough, but he makes them think that he's... I found a recipe for it. Oh, you want me to make them? (laughs) It's a pasty. Oh, pasty. It's... Pumpkin patsy? Pastry dough for two pie crusts, five slices of bacon, two carrots, medium potato, onion, salt, good beef. Good beef. Bison, venison, or lamb, or all. Butter, flour, beef broth. Ground beef. It's basically like uh, beef stew wrapped in puff pastry. Okay. Maybe for the season premiere next year, we'll have. Oh. A, yeah. Okay. Practice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what were you guys talking about? I was uh, too busy looking at Is Loki like faking all Mr. World powers and like has been doing so for years enough to have media and? I don't think so. So does he kill Mr. World and then he takes over? Was it really a Mr. World or did he just? I, I think he's God's... projecting whoever he wants people to perceive him as. So he Loki. has he has media and all so he's them. The trickster convinced? guy. Right. And he's really given power to other gods. Like, it was his idea to give Vulcan power, but 
whether that was a setup. Like this, uh, it would have been a whole setup between Loki and uh, yeah. Odin. Then that's so, just all Loki does is he makes deals. So and this he, is like the longest con, like a hundred years in the making. It's like uh, the Prestige with the uh, the Asian magician with the fishbowl, and yeah. he would always walk like that because he kept the fishbowl between his legs. Do you not remember that? I remember it now. Yeah, that was the the least important reveal, like a magical reveal of that movie but I, well, I mean he, he had to he had to walk that way all the, the time, time to yeah. be able to pull off it's grandmaster pycelle <laughs> grandmaster pycelle yes. from game of thrones the old meister oh he's so oh, oh yeah, yeah. Then he revealed, the guy from indiana jones yeah, was, yeah. and from well, he's, he's a villain something else he's been in a lot was it indiana jones and it was was he in star wars as well yeah that's what it was yeah he was driving the atat yeah uh, so i mean you hoth base you got him in some of the biggest movies <laughs> Lucas. of all time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he was young and fit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was but he, it was all an act. Yeah. Same thing. That comes back soon, man. I'm excited. Yeah, we just had one trailer for it, huh? Yeah. I'm okay. not going to watch it anymore. I don't think they'll probably release another one. Comic-Con. Uh, you think oh, so? Oh, no. That's the week after it premieres anyways. Yeah. That's weird. Seven hours. Because Comic Con's always end, been like after the season has ended. Right, and, and they can't say anything and can't reveal anything. And the characters talk about, like, oh yeah, you just got killed off this season. How talk about that? They should say that anyways, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't be gone yet. Uh, They're like, oh, that happens in episode five. <laughs> Sorry. I guess we'll do a podcast about that, but we gotta, we gotta make a guess. A Who's guess. gonna die? Yeah. We can do that. We, I think we've done it before, but I don't know if we ever. Went back and actually talked about if it was anybody right. Yeah. Well, go back and listen to all the podcasts, Corey. <laughs> I have the time. I could do it. All right. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Make a tally sheet. Yeah, I'll just put a tally sheet up in my truck. We only we've only been doing this for one season, though. It's just this. Uh, yeah, I guess it is. Just in one season. Yeah. I think we've talked about it before. It's just been personal. This will be episode forty-one. I guess we should be have done more, but in, in a year and change. Yeah, I mean we're doing we're at probably two a month. To be, f- yeah, we're probably at two a month on average. Posted or recorded? Posted. Because if we're at a year and a, we're not at a year and a half. We're we'll be at a year and a half in July. Right. Still in February. Oh, at the end of July, yeah. So we'll be. We've had seventeen months, sixteen months. Yeah. And about forty. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so it's it's not terrible. Um, but no, back to this. We'll just do a quick. Uh, I didn't like the beginning. I, I liked it from as soon as they got to Easter on. Okay. That's so just that, the episode. Yeah, what as far the as the episode. So you weren't digging the Nancy story. No, because it had to do with Billquist, and I'm just I'm not interested. It I also mean, has when to he's do, talking, it's right. great. He's very, uh, he's very good. Because that's his gift and his power is he tells stories. Yes. Yeah. Is it? Yes. Okay. I know he he tells some stories in the book. And no, all the stories are Nancy's stories, and that's a deal. Hmm? Not it, all of them. The yes. Coming no, to America? All, or, all or stories. Or is, is it? No, not writing. So he writes them and when somebody tells them? When stories are told, they're all Nancy stories, Anansi stories. That's what a theme in the book is. Okay. Hmm. He fought Tiger for the stories, and he won. And so now he has claim to all the stories. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, season on the whole. Um, I'd give it a B. Uh, make you excited to watch it more? Yeah, just because I like the source material. Um, if I didn't like the source material and it was just a, a show that I was watching, I probably wouldn't keep watching. There's a lot that I do like, but there's a lot that I'm just like, this could be cut out. Yeah. I'm lukewarm on it. I think it... It reminds me of, like some like slow Walking Dead seasons where like I'm guess I'm kind of invested, uh, not really too excited. Let's just I'm gonna keep watching. And see I'd say how if, it if you cut out the slow motion in the show, you'd probably cut out ten percent of the entire season. There's a lot of just slow motion scenes that aren't really. There's nothing really pushing the story forward. No, like, it's visual impact. But like you could pick out episodes. Like I liked half of this episode a lot. I liked the episode with uh, the Russians a lot. So you think if you found, like, a good editor, you could turn basically eight episodes into, like, four, and then, like, do all three seasons that eventually come out 
into like a more concise, solid. You know, people re-edit things. Yeah, yeah, like Breaking Bad. Somebody made it that. Somebody made it a two and a half hour long movie. That's tight. Yeah, and they, it's supposed to be really good. I've heard like <laughs> Star Wars being edited. You know, cut yeah. all the fluff. Uh, but no, I, I give it a B because like anything with Mad Sweeney was really good. The first episode was actually really good. The fight, the him meeting Wednesday. Um, I'm not too big on anything with Laura, except when she's with Mad Sweeney. Anything that was just her, I'm just like, eh. Her and a friend was when I first liked her. Or that like, was or funny she, when they that was a good when interaction they, when they they met. But um, there was enough for me to like this up this year that I'll definitely watch next year because I am invested in, and that I would give it a B. Um, season finale B. I didn't think it was amazing, but I just I don't really have any connection with Billquist or any really into that part of the story. I'm hoping it pans out in the second season. So much weird shit. I mean, it's weird. Flying through space and the guy with the boner. <laughs> like it's just odd oddities he does stuff for shock value mannequins run doing a little tap dancing scene oh you know um, yeah but it's it's i mean he's an executive producer on the show but and i'm sure he's contributed quite a bit but he's not steering the show oh i was talking about brian fuller oh brian fuller i like brian fuller i do too and but some of the things that like the slow-mo got out of hand on hannibal like really out of hand and they're splicing it in there every once in a while to kind of draw some impact, and it, it's not delivering all the time. Yeah. But on some scenes, it does. So what do you think of the show? It was okay. Would you uh, watch it above other shows that you like? Yes, because I like the book. So would you, if you had the choice, would you watch this or Saul? Um, you only get to watch one next season. That's not fair. Well, I'm just curious, because I would pick Saul nine times out of ten for this uh, show. I would pick Saul. Yeah. It's way better. Yeah. Saul is really good. Right. I don't know how you feel then, Walking Dead or this. Uh, Walking Dead. Because for me, they almost comparable. I'd be like, eh, I could go either way. Yeah, but Walking, Walking Dead... has been on for so much longer that you kind of build up a little bit of... If Walking Dead has six seasons, you can probably combine enough episodes to make two seasons of bad seasons. I would like to see a re-edit of Walking Dead, like, just take out a lot of, like, the filler stuff. I think out of six seasons, you have you could probably get four good seasons out of there. That'd be tight. I, mean, of, I would never rewatch it, but... No. <laughs> Half of the second season was bad, and then you had episodes scattered in here that could probably just could be eliminated completely. Mm -hmm. But all in all, there's more good episodes of Walking Dead than bad. I agree. In with that. my opinion. But I, I I can't sit here as a Walking Dead fan and say every episode's good because it's not. I think that's every TV show. They but I have. think there's been some really good seasons. I don't know why I thought of this, not to contribute to that sentiment. I think American Gods is really well made, whereas, oh, like, maybe just edited well, where one scene ends and, like, they had was somebody dying with AIDS and they show the, the line of mm -hmm. the... Heart rate. Transition. And, and that transitions right into like the scene of just the camera moving along the horizon. And, oh, it's and, incredible you know, to watch. Right. Like and, the visuals in the show are second to none. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Wednesday and uh, what's her name? Um, Easter. Easter. And you know, it's just go like they fade into a circle and then it zooms out of that circle. and It's not just circle. rainbow fade like George <laughs> no. Lucas. Like, so, moving on. I will say like really well, like, obviously planned and thought out like each scene like really well I, I don't think like walking dead has any artistic editing in such a manner like no it's no, the show like like show. show's very artistic oh yeah absolutely i agree with that 100 percent. you can say that above anything like visually like every frame right the the music or whether or not in I, color right yeah i would say that i would say a b b minus um, if I if I hadn't read the book, I'd probably give it a C minus because I yeah. wouldn't have any idea what's going on or um, where it's going. Would you have predicted the Odin if you hadn't read the book? Was that not a giveaway? Like, well, with the one eye, you think you you're, you're way ahead of Shadow Moon? Yeah, <laughs> I think most people would be. That's interesting. I I, I hoped I you'd be. I thought I was like he's just so dumb. Come on, I wouldn't. See, I don't think it's him being dumb. It's just him. Not connected to that world. Yeah, maybe. In any way. Always drifting, kind of just doing his own thing. Mm -hmm. 
not really connected to anybody. Yeah. I'm not, I didn't feel the sentiment of his, I don't know if I believe, I don't know what he doesn't believe. He's not believe supposed in. to, and I, that's part of my problem, is he's so emotional. Is it, is it the fact that, like, uh, well, no, because I was going to say, like, well, going back to Walking Dead, you know, you think that people are like, oh, they're zombies, and you laughed at me when I said, yeah, this is taking place in a world that there aren't zombie movies out. Yeah, which is weird. That's the same thing in any zombie movie ever. People aren't like, oh, those are zombies. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is the first time this is happening. Maybe except for Zombieland, which was like a, Wait, so you a think, spin. Like, I don't think in uh, the original, you know, the George Romero movies, they're like, oh, it's zombies. He like kind of made zombies, yeah. though. Well, maybe yeah, but not. Can you think of food. another movie where it was a situation where they were like, in Shaun of the Dead, they didn't say... Uh, well, they said uh, she said, "Don't say that word." But it, they were they weren't referring on the news to them being zombies. They called them infected. We just watched it part yeah. of it. So I'm, oh, yeah. I'm like, you would have to assume that most zombie movies they're not in a world where there are zombie movies. Like, it's, it's a, a new it's a new it's epidemic. Always, it's kind of a funny thing. It's like when in movies people say like this kind of thing doesn't happen in movies or you know the Kingsman Samuel Jackson like you think I'm going to explain my plan to you right now? This isn't that kind of movie. And every time somebody references like. They're not in the movie, but they are in the movie. Uh, so when you really think about that, that they in their world they don't have zombies, which is funny. Or what was a weird one I heard? It was in. Uh, I don't think that's weird though. I mean, you would have to you would have to assume that they weren't something because then they would know what was going on. It's like yeah, or no, or at least. Talk about like, it. Oh, these are zombies that are in this movie. Let's shoot them in the head. In the right. first Fast and Furious, there's a Ja Rule song playing, like in a club, I guess, in a scene. Okay. And then he's in every other movie but. Ja Rule. Oh, is it? Ludacris? Ludacris, sorry. What's the difference? There's a big difference. <laughs> Ludacris seems like a somewhat intelligent guy. And Ja Rule guy. is not. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ludacris song. And so somebody posed the question. Who's singing that song in that universe? <laughs> was it Ludacris? It's the same thing. Is it like, uh, does he look exactly like Ludacris? But it's like Last Action Hero, where any Arnold movie it was Sylvester Stallone, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so I, I would have never thought that in every any given zombie movie that they don't know like. I think some things have been done so many times that you have to assume that in that reality those things don't exist because then the movies would just be. I don't know. It might, it might make the characters more intelligent to the situation than... Yeah, but you or, could, then it's just like, oh, they did this in this movie, unless it's a comedy. Yeah, because then they might just be reciting pop culture, like, what did they do to survive in this movie? Uh, but... Yeah. Huh, it's interesting. Any other thing besides zombie, like, ghost movies, it, it's the same thing? You think ghost movies, like a ghost... Well, I guess Ghostbusters, they knew that ghosts existed prior to finding out but ghosts that's not exactly a movie thing that's been referred to in you know, just history in general probably just as real as zombies so yeah i mean <laughs> you probably got more of a shot at fucking although i just i was listening to the radio because it's all i do now and there was a uh, company uh pharmacy not a pharmaceutical company a medical company in sweden that has started reanimating uh dead brain cells oh jeez. Um, to That's basically try to bring people back to life. Hmm. Not that are brain dead that are on, like, life, uh, support. life support. Somebody that's dead. To reactivate? Yes. Life. So that's weird. How would they... I, I, I don't know. You know the man. How do you sustain... Like, what feeds those brain cells? I have no idea. That's interesting. They have a contraption that pumps I, nutrients. I don't know. No, thank you. It's very strange. Yeah, so you don't have, like, a brain that's thinking in a jar... It's like <laughs> no, like brain, like fucking the Matrix, or it's just a bunch of two conditions. Yeah. Um, I think you got a better shot at people fucking being brain dead, just walking around because their body still functions, than fucking somebody actually being dead and eating you. Yeah. If we're talking about the only infect, the only zombies that would exist are the ones from like twenty days later. They're it, infected with, like, a virus. And they die out because of starvation. Like, that is the most plausible scientifically. Because like, <laughs> otherwise zombies don't work. Like, Scientific muscles plausibility. muscles and oxygen and stuff. Yeah. Like, if your heart's not beating, your, the body's not going to move. My biggest problem with any 
zombie movie in general is how do they find people to eat? Because anything that would help you find somebody is going to be gone when you die. Yeah. You can't see because your eyes are decomposing. And you can't hear. Even differentiating. Smell. You can't hear. That's what and they the, say. And the smell. Down. It's like, oh, if you wipe... You're not going to be able to smell anymore. You're not... Because you're not breathing. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, to me, that's always been my biggest problem. Even watching... I think about it all the time. That's watching the Achille- Fear the Walking Dead. And that's I'm like, the Achilles heel. Uh, uh, zombies are able to differentiate very easily, even though it may not be obvious... I don't think you're meant to be analyzing it that way. Maybe if you were doing it to where, like, the zombies could survive, like, a week after they actually died, where, you know, things haven't decomposed to the point of... Yeah. So that's why, like, 20 they days. They have a shelf life? Yeah. You'd still be able to hear, but yeah. you wouldn't be able to smell because you're not breathing in. Well, I guess you can still smell stuff when you're not breathing. Very, yeah. Because you're breathing. I, I'm a taste. mouth breather. I don't breathe through my nose because my nose is always stuffed. If you hold stuffed. your breath in the bathroom, you don't smell it, though. What? Oh. Yeah, you do. To me, you have to be breathing in. That's funny, because you have, like, the biggest nose. <laughs> like, if you just hold your breath, you actually still yeah. smell? So, I don't breathe through my nose, you but can't turn when I'm walking around, I can, I can fucking smell things. Like, sense. barbecue, when barbecue is cooking, I don't breathe out of my nose. I breathe out of my mouth, and I can still smell it. Hmm. I can't breathe out of my nose half the time. I can't right now, out of my left side. It's never both. That's funny. If I don't want to smell something, I breathe through my mouth and maybe get like a hint of it, but. Somebody told me that when you smell things, you're actually tasting yeah, them. Yeah, you are. So when you smell shit in the bathroom. Yep. That shit particles in your nose. Yeah. yeah probably. That's gross. It's always fun. Um, but we should probably end, even though we're not talking about Ga- Game of Thrones. American Gods. Got the zombies. Yeah, it's funny, so. is, is like you, you can argue about so many shows, you know. People like Walking Dead, people don't, but Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad, have you ever heard anybody just be like, no, that show's garbage? Well, universally like. Yeah. It's it's pretty... The uh, Wire, which we've never watched. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to be there. Yeah. Uh, we didn't bring it up, but since we talked about zombies two seconds ago. Does it bother you Laura Moon has superpowers? Yes. I don't like that at all. Because in the book, she did not. She just kind of... You assumed like she stabbed some motherfuckers, but that... She was not superpowered. How did she kill Mr. Town? She killed him in the car, right? Did she shoot him? I don't remember. I don't remember. It's been a little while since I read she, it. I think she had something going on that was in a supernatural nature, but not to the point of where she can kick some guy's brains yeah. out of his head. Yeah. It never makes um, sense for zombies to be walking, but... Jump. <laughs> I, I don't like that either. I don't, I don't like the girl who's playing her, so it's hard to watch her sometimes. I don't have the same problem that you two have with her. I'm not a fan of her. And uh, why though? I don't know. It just be face just rubs like, you the wrong way. Like right the away. same reason I like Sweeney is I, I don't like first glance. He just seems awesome. I don't. Know. Well, with presence. him, him his dialogue is good. His yes. presence is good. Everything's good with her. You know, nothing's outstanding. But there's nothing that I'm just like, eh. Her, they just made her so angry. Her character so dour. Yeah, it didn't I, help. Maybe she had some cool lines and something. Or change my mind that thinks she's cool, but yeah, I'm I'm indifferent. But by like the end, she came it. around. Like if it started episode six of I mean, my first impression of her, maybe. But I just don't like the way that the direction of taking the character, which is fine. Everybody else likes it, so. All right, B B minus. What about you, Corey? Six point five. Six point five. We're both going letter grades tonight. You gotta. He's gotta throw. A- yeah, a that's what, you like. what is that? A, a D plus? Yeah. Is that a D plus? Yeah, I'll give it a seven. Okay, so C minus. So C. So C minus. Yeah. Wait, a seven is a solid. Is that a solid C? It's a C minus. Okay, seven, C minus. Yeah. You have to translate it to what you want. It's a seven. It's a C minus. <laughs> so B, B minus, C minus. So what do you give it? A, a, B, a B. A B. So you gave it a B. So you gave it eight point five. Huh? Yeah. Wait, no, just. Um, I guess that would. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it, forget it. But, yeah, I don't think we have anything else. Any last thoughts? When's it coming back? A, a year? Probably. Uh, they need to make it come back a little sooner, because I think people might lose interest. Maybe, man, so... Probably. Would you you want... probably have the people that are fans are huge fucking fans. Would you want the next season to be about the same length? I'd be okay with eight episodes. Yeah. It, they... 
I don't think that them having it longer would help at all. No. It would drag it out more. Right. Fuck. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to suck if they just did the lakeside. Oh. Dude, the Walking Dead comic today that we read fucking had Negan talking about fucking... <laughs> Fucking two people's feet pressed together to form a foot vagina. Oh, yeah. It was a whole paragraph. I was, I was like, what is going on? The issue was good except for that one part. I was like, what? He has a foot fetish? Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. You're always learning things about Negan. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I guess. Uh, you think they'll put that in the show? I'm done <laughs> with this conversation. <laughs>